even in LA it is, where do people think that they get their venison and they get their good foods there at Whole Foods Market and their fancy restaurants? Do they think that their roasted venison came from a deer that died of natural causes? <laughs> or was hit by a car? Roadkill? No. We hunters have a healthy respect for nature because in Alaska anyway, we try to live off the land and open any of our freezers and you'll see fish and moose and caribou, that's what we eat. And those left-wing groups are supposed to be so tolerant, right, of everybody's lifestyle, so tolerant, and yet they are so intolerant of our lifestyle. They're supposed to be so interested in healthy organic food, and so am I. I just happen to have to shoot the food before we get to eat the organic food. That is part of our lifestyle. But raising our kids on clean, healthy, organic Alaskan fish and wild game. I've, I've raised them to hunt and fish. And just as our native communities live off the land, you know, I'd like to ask these anti-hunting groups, why are you attacking our indigenous people and their subsistence way of life? And yes, by attacking our predator control program, wolf management, these groups are attacking our lifestyle. Predator control is a necessary and scientifically sound method for maintaining a healthy wildlife population like our moose and our caribou. And I think as governor, this was one of the most contentious issues with people from the outside of our state trying to come in and tell us not to um, reduce the number of predators, yet there was decimation of so many of our herds. It was one of the, I guess, politically toughest uh, issues that we had to deal with because there were so many people who just didn't understand why healthy populations of uh, different species are so important up in our state. And I've often suspected that these anti-hunting groups love animals more than they do humans. And their campaign against Alaska's predator control program I think proves that. Uh, they don't care that our rural communities, native communities, depend on healthy protein herds for their daily food. Our rural villages up there, they're hundreds and hundreds of miles away from any grocery store. These anti-hunting groups have more love for predatory wolf packs than they do for real-life hungry human beings. But what I don't understand is this. Why do they love the wolves so much, the predators, but disregard the baby caribou and the cute cuddly wolf calves that are eaten up by the wolves, where's the love for those critters? See, they accuse us of doing things up there like aerial hunting of wolves. In fact, people claim that I personally aerial hunt wolves and there's all these Photoshop pictures of me out there as if in my spare time just for fun I go smoke a pack of wolves. Well. They picture me hanging onto a helicopter skid with one arm while I unload an AK-47 with the other, and yeah, I like to pretend like I'm a good shot, but that, this is ridiculous. Of course, as you all know, aerial hunting federally and, and on state levels, it's against the law, and I don't know how many times I've told journalists that. I've told reporters that predator control is not hunting. The Alaska Department of Fish and Game issues special permits to those who are skilled in specific control areas and we monitor this very carefully and our program is very effective. We've saved whole caribou herds that were being wiped out by a single wolf pack. Lethal predator control is the only way to deal with these wolves. It's just reality. The alternative methods don't work and our state constitution instructs us to manage for abundance, to maintain a healthy population of all of our wildlife. And that means controlling predators. That's, that's the way, too, of a, a true conservationist. Alaskan hunters, like, like other American hunters all over this great country, true conservationists. And these anti-hunting activists, again, they're in my state now, and they're coming to yours, too. They're even targeting a documentary that I'm making right now on our great state, on Alaska. They want to boycott this. but you know, we've got a message for them. We say, bring it on. You know, they're not going to intimidate Alaskans, and they won't intimidate those of you, too, who understand why it is that predator control programs need to be put into place. So whether, whether it comes to protecting our families, our nation, or filling our freezers, our Second Amendment rights, our guns, are part of who we are, and we will never apologize for proudly clinging to them. Now, I'd like to talk just real briefly about recently 
um, some legal developments that have been kind of issues of the day on the national scene concerning our Second Amendment rights. All of you, as was discussed earlier in the program, will remember the landmark dis decision of the Hiller case. By a one-vote majority, the Supreme Court ruled that the Second Amendment means exactly what it says, and it does apply to the residents of the District of Columbia. That, that's common sense. That's what the Constitution says. Soon, though, the court will decide whether the Second Amendment applies to states when it decides on Chicago's gun ban, which was modeled on D.C.'s gun bill. And it'll probably be another one-vote majority. This should remind us of two things. First, that our rights hang in the balance, and we have to fight for them diligently. And second, elections have consequences. Because if John McCain and I were in the White House right now, that one-vote margin would be a two-vote margin, and that would turn into a three-vote margin. So yes, elections do matter. And it seems that the only thing in Washington, the only thing in Washington that's more out of touch with the will of the people and with correct interpretation of our Constitution, more out of touch than some in Congress is the D.C. City Council. Because even though the Supreme Court has told them to stop with their failed and unconstitutional gun control schemes, they still refuse to accept the Hiller decision. But I'm glad to see that um, those in Congress, my friend John McCain, he's introduced legislation to force D.C. to respect the constitutional rights of its residents. And isn't that just appalling, though? Can you imagine that, that here we are having to force them to respect the Constitution? But we do. The entire Constitution, including the Second Amendment, it should apply to our nation's capital. And it does. And no one, not even the D.C. City Council, can take away our landmark victory in the Heller case. Now, President Obama and his allies, like Nancy Pelosi, have been relatively quiet on the gun control front, not because they don't want to limit your rights, but because they're afraid of the political consequences. Don't doubt for a minute that if they thought they could get away with it, they would ban guns and ban ammunition and gut the Second Amendment. It's the job then of all of us, of the NRA and its allies, to stop them in their tracks. Let's remember the words of Justice Scalia. <laughs> Justice Scalia, he wrote the court's opinion in the Heller case. He said, it is not the role of this court to pronounce the Second Amendment extinct. Right on. Thank you, Justice Scalia. And let me just add this to his words. It is not the role of anyone to pronounce the Second Amendment extinct. No president, no senator, no congressman, no judge, and certainly no anti-gun activist will ever be able to take away our guaranteed individual right to keep and bear arms if we keep up the fight. We are America. God shed his grace on thee. We are the exceptional nation. We shall protect her. We will love her. We will follow her constitution. And we shall not apologize for being so proud of our country. God bless you, everyone in the NRA, and God bless America.